This traffic camera sits atop a pole at the intersection of Atherton Street and College Avenue in State College, Pennsylvania. It records grainy, low-quality video used to monitor traffic flow. 700 kilometers above that camera, a $600 million satellite moves at over 7.5 kilometers per second. It captures high-resolution images used by governments, private companies, and scientists. For one team at Penn State, both the humble traffic camera and the cutting-edge satellite represent an opportunity. Each can play a role in more effectively responding to future outbreaks of disease. So when we're thinking about disease ecology, we're really concerned with three interlinked factors. The host, the pathogen, and the environment. And they all control what's going to happen with interactions and movement and disease transmission. Nita Barty is an assistant professor of biology and a member of Penn State's Center for Infectious Disease Dynamics. And what we find is that the interactions between the human and the environment can often drive the interactions between the human and the pathogen. And if we miss that, then we miss a really important part of the system. In some of her earliest work, Barty used satellite imagery to track seasonal population shifts in the African country of Niger. Driven by the Sahel's seasonal wet-dry cycles, many of the nation's laborers are semi-transient. The population of cities like Niamey, the national capital, swell when people move there to find work in the dry season. When the rains return, workers leave to cultivate their crops. Similarly, the number of people coming down with measles, a highly infectious disease, spikes on the same cycle. Cases explode during times when people crowd into urban areas and drop back down when people return to the countryside. So highly mobile populations or migrant populations are more vulnerable to vaccine-preventable diseases than largely sedentary populations. Some of that is due to the fact that a lot of our disease response strategies are built around assumptions of sedentary populations. To better track seasonal population movement, Barty and her team used nighttime satellite imagery to demonstrate predicted density fluctuations. This enabled more accurate, targeted interventions with the measles vaccine. Barty's research group has also used satellite imagery to examine disease ecology. Using thermal satellite data and on-the-ground monitoring, Barty's team and collaborators in New South Wales showed that the Eastern Australia megafires of 2019 and 2020 burned more than a third of the habitat used by gray-headed flying foxes. So we're working on hendrovirus, and hendrovirus is a virus that spills over from fruit bats called flying foxes to horses and then to a number of other species, including humans. Fruit bats that are infected with hendrovirus seem to be fine. It's just the spillovers that are a problem. Those spillovers seem to be a factor related to loss of habitat and encroachment of a human system on the wildlife system. And as for those traffic cameras, Barty's lab used data from them, along with anonymized mobile phone location data, to track compliance with lockdown measures from March to August 2020. The team found that as restrictions were eased, increased traffic was a clear predictor of increases in COVID cases. Non-intrusive surveillance methods such as these could help public officials predict and allocate limited medical supplies during future outbreaks. To learn more, visit the Barty Lab of Human Infectious Diseases website at humanlab.com.